Welcome to the Movies in the Black show. We interview creators about making a living in their fields. Movies is the main subject. We also interview other creative fields as we believe there is a lot to learn from other industries. This episode, we have actor Dallas White. I've worked with Dallas before on our film Blood on the Leaves, and I've always been very impressed with his professionalism. He has done a lot of single episode shows for things like the History Channel, Fox, and Reels Network. We'll let him discuss that a little bit more. Welcome to the show, Dallas. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? Great. Real quick, why don't you give a maybe two-minute intro of who you are and what you do for the audience? Uh, my name is Dallas White. I am an actor uh, primarily in film and television. So basically, yeah, that sums it up right there. Um, cool. That is what I usually, that's usually what I broadcast. But there is obviously other, other things that I get into here and there. But um, went to Brunswick High School. Um, I took theater there. Uh, went to Frederick Community College where... I finally realized, because even throughout high school, I didn't, I didn't know I wanted to be an actor. I was just in theater doing all of the required requirements, <laughs> all the required assignments. And, uh, you know, I still have stage fright, even as of today. And I wanted to do more of the backstage work in high school. Um, and I guess for that reason. And uh, when I got into FCC, I took acting there. And that is when I realized I took a, a class there, Jeff Kaiholtz. He uh, taught me the Lee Strasberg's method, and and then it went from there. I'm so have you that was what because I don't know what that is. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> so basically, Lee Strasberg, uh, Lee Strasberg, um, basically was an actor who taught um, this method. Um, Jeff Kaiholtz obviously brought it down from him, and he uh, it's mainly taking past experiences whether it's a sad moment or a happy moment or what something like that and creating and pulling that emotion to create the environment or the atmosphere that you're in say on film or in theater and ex basically expressing that emotion from that past experience so um whether that worked um <laughs> works for other people i can say i was taught that method but honestly it's um partly connected to what with what I do as an actor when I'm thinking of the objective the objective of what a character has say say I'm trying to convince somebody something I don't take from the past experience I can't think of something from the past while I'm saying my lines and really putting out what it is I'm saying to this person I can't have something else on my mind so it really doesn't draw for me I had an audition for that and I had an audition where I had to basically have a, uh, it was an interrogation where my girlfriend in the scene has died, well, has died and I'm with an investigator and they're like, you know, did you kill her? Did you kill her? And, and of course I'm like, well, uh, no, no. And of course I'm supposed to be bawling and everything right. and I'm tearing up and I tear up throughout this interrogation, but it's not like I'm thinking about my dog that died in the past to pull those tears out. It was really just, for what I was saying, being in the moment and right. making it happen right then and there. I, I found that interesting. So, I mean, as like yeah. a filmmaker yeah. and as a director myself, I always find different uh, methods interesting because there's so many different things out there that people get. I mean, it's the same in the art form. Um, I'm also now into painting a lot and I spend a lot of time with painters and it's like, where do they draw? I mean, you're expressing emotion with how, whether you're painting something realistic or not, it's still an expression of emotion. So it's, it's interesting, the different techniques that come out to do that um, and to do it effectively. Is there any movies that, or shows that you've been on that people might uh, recognize? My, my little snippet through uh, Bad Moms. If you guys never, never seen Bad Moms, um, check it out. It has Mila Kunis in it, Catherine Hahn, Kristen Bell. I, auditioned for this they had a bunch of featured roles that were posted and i auditioned for the bus boy uh, <laughs> and um, basically there's a scene where Catherine hahn just lays out some raunchy stuff to me <laughs> most of it didn't even make the movie um so if you I have the blu-ray go to deleted scenes yeah yeah deleted scenes definitely check that out but in the movie you literally see me come in and out of a scene i'm filling up water for her and i think she says uh something like uh we're, we're talking i'm talking about my ex like she just wanted to make sure that I knew that she was talking about her ex, that she's single. Mm. Um, so that, that was really quick. But yeah, there was 
that was such a fun experience. Another thing, uh, copycat killers, uh, there's a, a docudrama or docuseries, um, a true crime on Reels, Reels Network. And it might be on Xfinity On Demand, or you can get it on iTunes. If you look up copycat killers, it's the Scream episode, which is actually the interrogation audition I was talking about, how I had to tear up during an interrogation. You successfully pulled um, that that's yeah so that's in there that was actually one of my first the first television thing that i had to do for you know where i was crying without trying to pull off an ugly cry um because <laughs> usually you know actors they they tend to if you can't get tears it's usually just yeah like just a ugly <laughs> cry to get it going and then having your hand like this but um <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was that was an awesome experience. There's a lot of indie films that I've been getting into. One of them that really highlights all of them right now is 17 Locust Street. I play a psychopath <laughs> um, named Darcel Carey, who is mentally unstable, obviously. Uh, if he is a psychopath, he's totally unstable. But yeah, that was one of those roles that really stuck out to people and freaked people out. And we got an award down in Houston at World Fest, uh, International Film Festival, and we went to Beverly Hills, Florida. It's, so it's been all over the place screening in theaters and uh, with other short films, you know, they have blocks and stuff. But um, no, it's been pretty successful. That's probably one of the, the most popular indie films that I've done so far. Yeah. How many do you think that you, because I mean, at the time, I just to give a little background, I met you, I met Dallas in a film that we made uh, here in Pennsylvania called Blood on the Leaves. And you had done quite a yes. bit before we had met there. And I think you've done a lot since then, too. Do you have an idea of how many total projects you've been in? You're going to be well, like I mean, six. I've been in six. <laughs> <laughs> Three. That's it. Nope. No. Yep. Um, but no, I, there's so many, there's so many projects that I've been a part of, but like you never see, like they're yeah. just gone. Oh yeah. Did you at least get paid for like, those? Well, you know what? Honestly, a lot of those were like when I was just starting out mm -hmm. and see it's when, when, I would drive. People, when people shell out money for you, they have to finish the project. That's. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm always appreciative of that because then it's like, hey, you know, if the project doesn't get finished, obviously I want the project to be finished. But hey, that's that's <laughs> at least I didn't travel and pay for my food for nothing in my hotel. <laughs> but um, Airbnb. No, definitely. I would say roughly around 30. A lot of a lot of the shows for investigation, discovery and and. Reels Network. I did something for Fox News Channel called Legends and Lies, which was produced by Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> that was, you know, a one day thing. And a lot of these things are usually I, I go there and they're like, hey, Dallas, we want you to play this person. Just, you know, come in. It's one day. You know, you have a scene and it's it's great. And so and something I just did that for another show, which who knows when that'll air. Probably next probably next year. But uh, <laughs> but like I do these one day things where I go in. And it'll be a quick scene. It's a half hour episode. And usually for docu-series, each episode is like a different story. So it's not a episodic thing. Like yeah. Very, yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, so, you know, when I do go in there, I like it because it's different characters and they're right on the spot. I'm always playing somebody different, but very quickly. When I, I've never been a part of a project yet where I'm the same character for a long period of time that's probably one of the goals within the next couple of years is to be a part of something whether it's a, a tv series or even a feature film that even goes into a sequel or something where i can you know re-experience a a character that i have before 17 locust street is definitely one of those characters that i you know i'd always hope that we can create a feature from it. Uh, it was originally a short film, and we really wanted that to me and Daniel uh, Wyland. Daniel Wyland, he wrote and directed Seventeen Locust Street, and we've talked about that. And uh, you know, we we've never got around to it, but we have we've had the idea of possibly doing a prequel to that story, where I won't I won't be in it. I'll basically make a cameo at the end. But that was that was something, just an idea of of re-experiencing a atmosphere that people yeah. are very scared of <laughs> <laughs> and the character i get it though you you take all this time to build a character and a universe um it's the same as when I, I when i write or when i even produce something that i put a lot of effort into right 
when exactly. people are like, oh, are you going to make a sequel? And then when you make a feature film, like especially an indie feature film, like making a sequel is not really on the table most of the time, unless you're literally yeah. just doing it for fun or you make a huge mm-hmm. hit. <laughs> but most of the time, yeah. sequel is yeah. not really a possibility. You know, people ask you that all the time and it's like, I would love to. I'd love to experience those characters, see where they go from there. Like It really, it really comes down to, you know, how much the audience liked the first one. And, you know, the finances obviously are way way out of everybody's league especially in the independent film industry you know it, it's tough it's yeah, really tough has to you know really even, really like it to be able to pay for enough to make a second one exactly exactly and i've so, seen yeah. too many i've seen too many really good movies come up with a second movie and it's been horrible so you don't want to do that either <laughs> you don't want to ruin your like butterfly effect did you ever see I, the sequels of butterfly effect no no i haven't third I, butterfly seen... effect and it's horror they're both horrible oh well i'm, I'm you know what i'm glad i didn't see There's it also I, I watched the first Darko. one oh yeah oh. yep also bad yeah the, you know what there's so, there's <laughs> so, so don't make sequels, sequels. like i no i literally I, I saw a uh i saw someone post a sign it was one of the movie theater signs and they're like here's the lineup and it literally was like this movie two this movie three like they just had numbers beside each one and i'm just like when you know hollywood is running out of ideas there's there's right. the reason right there does that or feel, they're in like a pack does it feel frustrating when you see um as like an actor as you see that stuff and you know they keep the same character the same people over and over and over again so it's like the opportunities at the top become thinner i guess and then that trickles yes. down the whole way it's kind of like when a ceo of a company refuses to retire and no one can move up mm-hmm. because there's no like openings for new positions chris evans is exactly until captain america dies like too bad yeah except for spider <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Spider Man. You know they keep making them, and and hey, more money to them. But uh, you know, I just a couple nights ago, I just watched uh, Halloween, mm-hmm. uh, the new Halloween, and that. Uh, <laughs> you know, they. I'm glad they kind of took from the past and just didn't make another Halloween story. You know, forty years later, they got Jamie Lee Curtis's character, um, and and a part of me is like thinking, okay, well maybe this will be on it too. Um, and you know, those horror films that go forward to another perspective. So I'm watching this movie and, and I, I probably laughed more than got scared. Um, and it was, it was mainly because like a lot of, you know, you, it's the 1980s horror film in 2018. So right. it kind of, it really, just it really work. show, I mean, <laughs> production quality, obviously is so much better, but yeah. there's these, you know, there's a lot of the cliche, there's cliche lines that were involved that, you know, me, me and a friend of mine were there and we're watching it. And there's a couple lines in the movie that, you know, they really didn't need to go that far. It's like, you know, happy Halloween, Michael. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah I mean, they there's just these, make these movies and I for get nostalgia's sake now. That's, that's definitely... Um, yeah, and I get it. I mean, which is why the it, indie world... Was it entertaining? Important. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, when people ask me, they're like, was it entertaining? I was like, absolutely, it was entertaining. Yeah. Was it scary? Eh, you know, it's... They say it's a horror film, but hey, look at Get Out. You know, Get Out was nominated for Best Comedy, so... <laughs> Who was expecting that? <laughs> yeah, those two, so those two genres, like, honestly, they, they tie together in a lot of ways, especially now. Yeah. yeah that was legitimately, like, tense. That was, like, yeah. heart rate, like, yeah. spiked during that, but uh, it was also hilarious. There's a new genre duo coming out, and it's it's horror comedy. And I, I literally was <laughs> just a part of a film. I was, <laughs> I was a, I was a part like of a... the most uh, absurd thing you could possibly say. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was... was yeah, no, I no, I get it. I was just on a feature film set not uh, not too long ago, so a little earlier. Well, this summer, um, this past summer, and it was called Bad Witch, uh, which will come. I guess it will go through film festivals next year. And you know, <laughs> there's they're making a comedy horror, and I'm like, wow, this is great. And when I showed up, it was freaky and and scary, but at the same time, there's those lines. It's all about the writing and those lines that come after that make it funny mm-hmm. and it works. It really, it really works. So I'm excited to see that and see how even comedy horrors that come out in the future. I'm like, Hey, more power to you. I think That's it's great. A big, I think it's a big genre. I mean, those are both, I mean, from a producer standpoint, 
I do a lot of research on uh, like the profitability of certain genres and things like that. And both of those two genres are very profitable niche genres. So to tie those together, and there's also something like in a psychology of it, it's like you're scaring someone and then making them laugh and then scaring them again. And it's like this, you know, you you roll them into a sense, a false sense of like being scared and then you make them laugh and then you're lulling them into a false sense of security and then you make them scared again. And it's more extreme and you have a lot more emotion attached to the film, which then hopefully means you'll go back and watch it and pay for it again and again. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, that's, oh yeah. That is interesting. It's like, like, uh, they, you know, get them to calm down and laugh and everything and then oh. stun them again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, Dallas, give me an idea of what your creative income percentage is. And for anyone who doesn't understand what that means, that's how much as an actor are you making financially so you've been in quite a few things. You have some work with TV stations or TV channels and things. Like what could someone at your level of experience expect to be making versus their like other income? If there was, if, if acting was the only thing I was doing, I'd be on the streets right now. I wouldn't <laughs> be in this room. But um, I would say at, at this point in, in my career, I would say probably like 10 to 15%. And, and when I say 10 to 15%, I mean, if I'm doing at least one thing every couple months, and whether that is, and it doesn't have to be like a credited thing, like it doesn't have to be like a big role in a movie or anything like that. If I'm going and I do a little commercial shoot, you know, that's one thing for the next two to three months. And the other like 85 to 90% is usually things that um, is obviously could be a day job. Um, It could be side work, you know, um, like, (laughs) I mean, literally back here in the corner is my DJ equipment. Like I I DJ weddings uh, every so often, whether that's once a year or five times a year. It all depends on how many people will reach out and that's never brought and that's not broadcasted. And I think that's the difference between, you know, the creative income is, is a lot of people, if that's what you really want to do and you want to create that as a living, you know, that as your living income, um, that number is going to go up eventually. Um, the more you make connections and different things like that, but the 85 and 90% is the stuff that you don't want to broadcast. Whether right. it's, yeah, you, you don't know, want to confuse people. You know, I could, a barista. Yeah. Yeah. So like people, you know, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and, and all kinds of LinkedIn, wherever, <laughs> and, you know, and, and people think, wow, you know, you're really making a living off of what, you know, acting or, you know, whatever. And, and really I tell people, I'm like, you know, that's just what I want you to see, you know, mm-hmm. you know, that's what, and, and it's also broadcasting that it's my passion and that that's what I want to do. Um, whether that is, so don't ask me about DJing weddings. Just ask me about. No, yeah, there's these there's these side gigs that's like you know I I used to have I still have the camera like I have a DSLR camera that I go do photography on or you know video work on and I only do that every so often and and that's not my expertise at all but yeah definitely the other eighty five to ninety percent is all of that Um, you know an office job these little side gigs. Basically, that's it. And, um, and do you feel that you know, people think, oh, wow. Do you, do you feel that over time that your that percentage of your income has grown the acting part? And like, oh. how long have you seen like it's how long has it taken to kind of see that make a difference? Because 15 percent, that's still something, you know, that's. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, when I when I first started out, you know, this was I mean, this is about six years ago is it was mostly extra work. Like I would go and do extra work almost every day. So therefore it was like up in the 75, 80% range, but you know, that was extra work. So I, you know, I don't, I don't take that into consideration. It's it's still going to set and still being there in in an atmosphere that I want to be at. But you know, as of now with, with what I want to do and I want to go and have a, you know, really a good proficient, um, a potential role that is uh, challenging. And so I get to a point where, you know, I'm not picky at what things I, I do or what I, you know, take in, but it's more of, um, it's more of the potential of exposure and how much that job is going to get me further. Um, you know, it gets to a point where 
you know, I was down in Atlanta and uh, I was living down there on a futon in someone's living room. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was doing extra work because I wanted to go see Tyler Perry Studios. I wanted to see Pinewood Studios. I wanted to see all these studios to go around and just be a background artist. You know, it, it was great. But was it getting me anywhere? Maybe. Um, you know, I got to see the sets. But it really, honestly, you know, I made a lot of connections with other fellow people that wanted to, you know, want to be actors. But, and that's the challenging part is, is actors can support actors, but actors, you know, if they're, if people have connections, they can pull other actors in, but it's tough. Um, <clears throat> that's why, you know, one time I went, literally went to a, um, it was a, what was it? An ed- it was an editing, um, like tutorial. Mm-hmm. And like a workshop. Editor- yeah, it was a workshop for editors. And I was like, I was like, all right, so I'm going to go to this. Um, I'm an actor, I'm not an editor. So I go to this and I literally see all these editors and directors and people. Here's my card. Here's my card. Here's my card. Yeah. Here's my card. So like if you pair up like one plus one equals two. (laughs) So it's director to the actor, the producer to the actor, to the writer, to the actor. I mean, that's, that's a golden, a golden rule that I I go by too. I think that's really smart. There's actually, I, I notice that a lot in every art field. So you have like painters that spend a lot of time interacting with other painters, which is fine. Cause I mean, that's how you kind of keep inspired about your craft and things. Yeah, but absolutely. You're looking yeah. To grow uh, your potential of paid work, especially, or interesting work for you. You really have mm-hmm. to, you, those people that are doing the same thing you are, are not going to be the people that are going to get you those gigs. Um, where like with, you know, painting, you want to be interacting with like gallery owners and going to new galleries and things like that, or even just collectors, like mingling in those circles, not necessarily the artist circles, but like the wealthy people circles who can afford art. Uh, and like, that's a really genius idea, actually. That's kind of like a nice little tip there for some, some actors uh, to go to a workshop or something. if If there's a workshop for directing or whatever, and you're, and you want to be an actor, go to it. I mean, yeah. you might learn, I mean, you might learn something and it, it's also, it's a great, it's a great tool to go do. Cause then you're also, you're in the environment of a bunch of directors that want to be directors or, but at the same time, you're also learning about how directors think. Um, and it could potentially, you know, you can meet eye to eye when you're on set. Um, yeah. and I think that's important too. Uh, I did an acting class in, in the spring, um, a uh, a cinematographer and director and an actor. Um, his name D- Daniel Wylan, who wrote and directed um, Seventeen Locust Street. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he he pulled me into this class into the spring in the spring at the um, Maryland Ensemble Theater, and he was there. He's not much of a he doesn't participate too much in the acting field, but he also is he he loves directing and he loves listening to the the person that's teaching the class and what they're telling the actor because that's what he's going to be telling the actor on set. So he wants to get into, he, that's the part he likes is yeah. he's, he's basically taking away from what, you know, Hey, you guys should be doing this. How to or, talk you to know, an actor. Or maybe. And, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I get that. I, I took an online course with uh, Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> They've removed that yeah. course now, uh, but it was a great course. <laughs> and it was a great way to learn because he was teaching acting, right? And it was a great way to yes. learn as someone who's not necessarily from an acting background, how to talk to actors in a way that they can really resonate with it and that they are going to like how you're going to get the things out of them that you need to. Um, and mm-hmm. I think that's incredible. I mean, you look at Quentin Tarantino, that's how he started. He started in actors workshops. He wanted to be an actor. And then everyone was like, you write these really yeah. great scenes. You should make movies. And he did, but he brought a lot of those people that were in those acting classes with him. Like, mm-hmm. so unless your acting friends become directors, stop only the yeah. actors. We do, we do have a really good, like, there's a really, there's a really good group of us that is um, here in, in Frederick, Maryland. And, and, you know, we have, we have our actors, we have, you know, different, you know, uh, race, different gender. We have a good group of people. We have an editor, we have, you know, some, Unfortunately, our cinematographer and director, Daniel Weiland, who he moved to L.A., so we don't have him anymore. So we're, you know, we we try and find the next person around here to join kind of our group. Um, But we really, you know, and it all comes down to the writing, too, because, you know, if something's not written, then there's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's nothing. 
there's nothing planned out. And so that's, that is probably the weakness right now. Um, you know, me and, uh, me and my friend Jordan, we, we were trying to write a feature right now that's very gripping and raw and it's inspired by true events. So that's something that we're trying to, you know, whether it takes, you know, six months or five, 10 years to finish, eventually it's going to get finished. It's just a matter of when, right. <laughs> um, but you know, those are, those are important too, is creating your own opportunities as well. Oh I, um, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of my number one advice always for people. And I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't make all of my money from my art forms, although I have more than one art form and it, that definitely helps the diversification. Mm-hmm. It's always, you know, if, if you want to make movies, make a movie. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Whether oh, yeah. like, yeah, if you want to be in it, like, it's like uh, the common advice for actors, but it's harder. It's easier said than done. Obviously movies, particularly are one of the hardest art forms to get into, I think, because how many people it takes to make something. You can't just make movies by yourself in your shed. It takes an army. You're really talented. Yeah. It takes an army or what they call the skeleton crew. We literally had five people on set for 17 Locust Street. Yeah. Well, I mean, you look at Blood on the Leaves. How many people did we have? I know, yeah. We had, uh, I think, five had, people on our crew. And then actor-wise, we maybe had yeah. eight total. Yeah. yeah. And that movie that made its money crazy. back and made some money. So that's, like, how you got to do it. But it's on, um, it's on Amazon Prime right now, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you go to Amazon Prime, you can check out Dallas's work. He's in Yeah. There. He's the hero of the story, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It's funny. That was, great. That was, yeah. that was a lot of fun. I, I remember I remember driving up to uh it was right outside of Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, it's about I don't know, like an hour and a half outside of Pittsburgh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I remember I was driving up there because I had to leave I had to leave from, from Maryland at like I don't know what time it was, like two AM. And I drive up there and it's in the middle of the night and I was going through the all these like back roads and it was all scary and I was like, Oh my gosh, where am I going? Where and I haven't met any of you guys yet. So I was like I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get murdered, I'm gonna get killed. This is this is this is what happens to actors. They <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like, every single actor that showed up said the same exact thing. They were like, I thought oh, I yeah. was murdered. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great yeah oh, wow. well you're here to tell the tale like we did not murder you no nope still here still still kicking and the movie actually got done too so that's that's the thing yes that's, that was important yes better said than a lot of projects that i've been on and i'm sure you've been on too well about to wrap up here dallas is there okay. anything i think that the question I want to ask you, because usually some t- my questions kind of revolve around art, but I, I want to kind of ask if you feel like your career is still on a trajectory to eventually be fully an actor all of the time, or have you kind of settled into that being just a piece of the puzzle? It's uh, as of right now, obviously, you know, there's a lot of priorities, whether that's, you know, keeping up financially. So at this time, it's more of a, if everything else can hold up, then yes, it's basically a piece of the puzzle, you know, down the line, you know, if, if the connections are there and if say there's a big shot at something and it can serve as my income for the next two years, then, you know, will I take off <laughs> from everything else? Uh, I, honestly, I don't know until that time comes whenever that may be. But um, as of right now, it's, it's more of a piece of the puzzle. Um, obviously my goal is to, that's all I want to do is do a project, you know, work on that, you know, for three months or, you know, a month or whatever. And then that could be my income for that year and then go into something else. And it's all about getting the right agent and um, the agent getting you those auditions, because I'm telling you, like a lot of the, a lot of the auditions are really helpful, you know, and a lot of them are secured at a fly out to Chicago for an audition. And it was a secured audition where nobody else can get in if they didn't have an agent. And this agent that I had um, in Chicago, she's the one that got me into there. Unfortunately, I didn't get the role. But at the same time, it was an opportunity to audition for a $50 million budget movie that's actually coming out next year. And it was one of those that, you know, I was able to meet casting directors that casted Matthew McConaughey and big time actors. So it was like one of those experiences, like it's a long shot, but I'm going to go do it, do the best I can and meet these people. And it's all about the going and, and having an experience and meeting people and just doing the best you can. Never, never worry about getting a role. It's just a matter of being there and doing the best you can and being open. And, uh, 
it's it's all about the what everybody else wants yeah and it's you're just one of those one of those pebbles in the in the stack and who knows they might pick you out but you can only you, you can only tell if you play so well if people can connect you in one place where would that be i would say definitely um facebook i have a uh, I have a facebook uh page uh, i have a personal page that um, people can add me um but uh but there is a like page so if you type in dallas white i should come up i have that little blue check mark that nobody cares yeah dallas white Look me up. I'm on uh, uh, Twitter and Instagram. I'm on there. Um, type in at it's Dallas White, and uh, you can look me up on uh, DallasWhite.net. All of my icons are there, right on the homepage. So you should be able to. That's your one-stop shop you for everything. You one, and you just gave me a bunch of them. You just you just broke the rules of the podcast. I just broke it. I just broke it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thank you All for right. having me. Please subscribe and let us know what type of content, what questions that you really are dying to get answered, and we'll do our best to help you solve the problems that you're facing as a filmmaker. Thank you for watching Movies in the Black. Stay tuned for more.